Hello friends, uh, myself Dr. Smiley Pruthi. So in this video now I am going to tell you the high yielding topics uh, for which there are chances to be asked in, a, in the exam depending upon my experience from the last five years pattern of NEET exam, what questions and what topics are frequently asked. It is very important for you to revise these topics in the end so that you can easily quickly solve them during the exam. Whether some topic you have read one year back or you have uh, very nicely read, read it two months back but it is very important to revise all the questions, all the topics just before the exam. So let's see the topics. First I will take carbohydrate chemistry. In carbohydrate chemistry the most important topic on which questions are asked is isomerism in carbohydrates. Do all the types of isomerisms with all the structures of carbohydrates image based question can be asked on the structure of uh, carbohydrates right and also one more topic which I will say is less important but you should once read it in the end that is mucopolysaccharides or GAGs and their diseases mucopolysaccharidosis which is a kind of lysosomal storage disease. Uh, there is no need to do all the types of uh, MPS uh, which, are, which are given in the books just most important are type 1, type 2 and type 6 which you should do and there is no need to do the detail of clinical features just do the general clinical features of all the mucopolysaccharidosis and specific enzyme absent in which disease for which I have just told you type 1, type 2 and type 6 that is it right. Then in carbohydrate metabolism it is very important topic where you have to read the topics in detail like glycolysis. RL shunt that is rapaport liberating shunt or cycle occurring only in RBCs where net production of ATP is 0. Then you have to do the detail of TCA cycle, then gluconeogenesis, then uncouplers in ETC especially, then HMP, no need to do the all the detail of HMP, just in short you need to know the uh, phase 1 of HMP and what phase 2 is producing and the final end products of HMP and here you can also learn the marker of B1 and B2 deficiency. You know that for B1 it is transketolase and for B2 it is glutathione reductase activity, right. Then you should also do galactose metabolism with the galactosemias, especially enzyme defect of uh, classical galactosemia and then you need to do glycogen and glycogen storage diseases in detail. One question on glycogen topic is a must in your exam, right. Then coming to enzymes, in enzymes classification, you know that classification has six types of enzymes known as EC numbers from 1 to 6. You have to do the subtypes of all the uh, enzyme categories and the examples of all of them because they can ask EC number of any enzyme in the exam, right. This is a frequently asked topic these days, right. Now next is regulation of enzymatic activity that is covalent and allosteric regulation. Covalent means phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. In allosteric you have to do the detail of allosteric enzymes also known as regulatory enzymes. Their graph which is sigmoidal graph. Uh, on that uh, since last few years questions are more asked on uh, graph for allosteric enzymes as compared to the michaelis menten graph, right. Then you have to do the uh, ubiquitin proteasome pathway which is for protein degradation or enzyme degradation and on the other hand there is one protein for protein folding that is shaperons. So questions are frequently asked on ubiquitin and shaperon. So ubiquitin is for protein degradation and shaperon is for protein folding, right. See the name shaperon. So it is CHA uh, PE, right, but the we pronounce it as shaperon because they give shape or folding of proteins, right. Then coming to amino acids and proteins where you have to learn all the polar and non-polar amino acids, all the essential and non-essential amino acids. Then there are two semi-essential arginine and histidine. You should be knowing that arginine is more towards essential category as compared to histidine. Then there are some controversies in this topic that also you should be knowing. You just need to know the controversy. Once you know it as a controversy then you can solve the question, right. There is no need to. Uh, bang your head in books for controversies. You just need to know the controversy simply, right. I have taken this motivational thing in my app also. You can uh, see the motivational videos in my apps, how to study biochemistry, how to approach this subject. Then all the structures of proteins are required, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure with the, their differences and their examples. Then you should be knowing the methods of detection of various structures of proteins like X-ray crystallography, mass spectrometry. 
and then transemination is very very important with urea cycle along with it and the all the five disorders of urea cycle and you know the sixth enzyme of urea cycle is NAD synthase that is also very important then the 21st amino acid selenocysteine with its detail that which proteins or enzymes are known as selenoproteins they are mainly reductases and peroxidases right then um, detail of metabolism of aromatic amino acids that is tyrosine and tryptophan is required then the diseases in amino acid metabolism that is maple syrup urine disease alkaptone urea albinism then next topic lipids in lipids you have to do pufas that is polyunsaturated fatty acids in omega 3 and omega 6 category there are three fatty acids in omega 3 and again three fatty acids in omega 6 category then sphingolipids and the diseases like Gaucher's disease and Niemann's Pick's disease. You know that Gaucher's disease is most common lysosomal storage disease also. And then lipoproteins, HDL, LDL, VLDL, chylomicrons. This, this topic is very, very important. Then the beta oxidation of fatty acids and its energetics. Then Zellweger syndrome, uh, frequently asked topic Zellweger syndrome. Then coming to molecular biology. All these topics which I am telling you are already covered in my mobile app. And the, for my app subscribers, I would like to tell that in the end, you, you can do all the handouts which are already sent to you by Prepladder team in the mail that all the handouts, they are already high yielding cycles and pathways and tables which you have to do. So let's see other high yielding topics also like molecular biology, it is very important, nucleotides, metabolism and their structure you have to do. Then leach nyhan syndrome, which is a syndrome in the salvage pathway. Then DNA polymerases types uh, and RNA polymerase types also is important. Then one topic important is Tata box, which is helping in initiation of transcription. And also you have to do the differences between Tata box and Shine Delgarno sequence. And next is genetic code, various types of RNAs, various types of ribozymes, operon model, especially the LAC operon, lactose operon in prokaryotes. Then next is RNA interference or silencing technique in which micro RNA or SI RNA is used. Then the techniques in molecular biology like microarray, PCR, RFLP, restriction fragment length polymorphism. Then epigenetics and genomic imprinting is also very, very important in which most common genomic imprinting change is DNA methylation, right? Then few topics in miscellaneous like fuel for body, the basics that fuel uh, required for body during fed state, fasting state and starvation state. Then the respiratory question in AIMS November 2018 also question on RQ was asked. Then you should also read once vitamins and minerals. You have been doing this topic since your school time, but just read it once so that if some basic question is asked, you can answer it. Then chromatography electrophoresis with their types, especially SDS page, that is SDS is sodium dodecyl sulfate. Then uh, heme synthesis, but only a little bit, that is what is the rate limiting enzyme, in which compartment of the cell it is occurring, what is the activator, only this, this much about heme synthesis and also lead poisoning is inhibiting which enzyme of heme synthesis. There is no need to do the detail of heme uh, synthesis, full pathway, 8 steps not required, only do the first 2 steps and uh, question on porphyria is also very rare, so please don't waste your time in doing porphyrias in the end. You know, rare topics are not rank deciding topics. You should just do the frequently asked and conceptual things in any subject, be it any subject, right? As they say that don't bite off more than what you can chew. That is, do not take more responsibility uh, as compared to what you can handle. So only learn or uh, revise that much which you can handle, right? In the end, only the most important high yielding topics should be done in any exam and follow the idea of minimal studies by focusing on preparing the most high yielding which are actually expected in the exam. You can easily leave the rare topics and do not take any stress if such rare topic, if such rare question comes in the exam because what they will do is that first they will give you one rare hi-fi question and next question will be very easy. So if you take stress of that question which is rare and you know most of the students are unable to answer it. So when you take stress on that you will not be able to solve the next very easy question and that next question is the rank deciding question, right? So do not take any stress in this last one month, take your enough amount of sleep 
and just do qualitative studies as you can always see that smart work can beat the hard work right so best wishes for your upcoming neat exam thanks for watching Thank you.